Good morning everyone and welcome to our special Father's Day service today. Hope that all the dads in our congregation felt a little bit special as I know that certain guardian angels have dropped a little prezi off for you during the course of the weekend and if you haven't received it please check your post boxes. Thank you for choosing to join us today. May the Lord reveal himself to each and every single one of us as we come together to worship. Ndia nibulisa nonke gengaba le kosi yetu u Jesu Christu. Akhrutila alke na ni noa fronsiere Jesus Christus. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have quite a couple of birthdays this week. On the 21st, which is tomorrow, it's Jeanette Smith's birthday. On the 23rd, which is Wednesday, it's Claire Frazier's birthday. On the 26th, which is Friday, it's Andy Stewart's birthday. And on the 26th, which is Saturday, it's Zeen Tlebe's birthday, as well as John Champion's birthday. So, happy birthday, everyone. We hope that you have an amazing day on your birthday and that you are spoilt absolutely rotten. But that the here ahead will be blessed and may the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Then we just have an announcement. Our church's general assembly will be taking place from the 26th to the 20 to the 30th of June. And I've been appointed as a commissioner of the Central Cape Presbytery to attend the General Assembly this year. So therefore I will be unavailable during that time if you do have an emergency please contact your elder or the session clerk Marilyn Pattinson. We also ask that you all pray for our denomination that God will bless the General Assembly deliberations that are to take place. Pray for all those who are present and making decisions that they will make decisions that are according to God's will and God's plan for our larger denomination. Also, please remember our moderator, clerk and general secretary who will be working extra hard in this week to come so that the General Assembly of this year will bring glory and honour to our God. We're going to start this morning by listening to the hymn, Father God. worship this morning comes from Romans 8 verse 15 and there we read the following we do not receive a spirit that makes us fearful slaves instead we receive God's spirit when we are adopted as his own children for now we call him Abba Father 
This morning, this verse from Romans comes to remind us that we have such an intimate relationship with God that we can call him Abba. We can call him Dad or Daddy. And as a dad and a daddy, he loves us with an everlasting love. He makes us his own children and he cares and loves us more than an earthly father ever could or would. And that is why we come together this morning to worship him. We come to sit at our dad's feet, share with him what's going on in our lives, in our hearts, in our minds. We come to connect with him. And so let's do that this morning in silent and individual prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, our Father in heaven, we come into your presence this morning for we yearn for you. We come into your presence because we want to spend time with you. We come into your presence because we want to worship and praise you. Thank you that you are always there for us. Thank you that you protect us, that you stand up for us, that you watch over us, and that you hold us in the palm of your hand. Thank you that we can come to you with all our worries, our concerns, our anxieties, our stress. And you listen. You understand. You hear us. And you see us. Lord, we know that there are often times when we get things wrong. So often we interpret situations in a wrong way. And we end up acting or saying something that doesn't align with your will. So often our own ego and pride and hurt feelings cause us to respond in ways that you disapprove of. We gossip, we hate, we lie, we cheat. So often we do not show your love to those who you send on our way. We come to you now, silently and individually, to come and confess our sins to you. Hear our confessions, see our repentive hearts, experience the guilt we feel. Lord, we sorry. We sorry for not always getting it right and disappointing you so often. Forgive us. Have mercy upon us. Let your grace flow over us once again this morning. Wash us, cleanse us, pardon us if you find our confessions acceptable in your sight. Thank you, Lord, for your promises that we can hold on to that tells us that you are compassionate, you are loving, you are kind, you are caring. When we earnestly come to repent, you take our sins and you remove it so far away from us as is possible. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for your forgiveness and pardon yet again this today. Lord, you know us intimately. You know how many hairs are on our head and how many teeth is in our mouth. You know our darkest and deepest secrets. You know the things that worry us, the things that cause us to have anxiety, the things that make us depressed and steal our joy. We come to you, Lord, to ask that you'll be with us today. Holy Spirit, come and fall afresh on us, each in our own corner. Come and hold us close, come and embrace us, come and love us as you reveal yourself to us, as you connect with us. Open our ears and our eyes to your presence. Open our hearts and our minds to your existence. Open our beings so that we can know that today we've met the living God. Be with this service and all other services taking place in your holy name. Amen. We're now going to listen to the hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
Our reading this morning comes from Psalm 103. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, and you are more than welcome to follow along me in your Bibles. Psalm 103, it reads as follows. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strife with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. As for the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are but dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. And its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting of those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to such as keep his covenant and to those who remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his words, heeding the voice of the word, Bless the Lord, all you, his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Here ends our reading today. May the Lord bless to us the understanding of his holy word. A man once shared the following story. When I was born, My mother wasn't married, and so growing up was really, really difficult. When I started school, my classmates had all sorts of names for me because I didn't have a father. I used to go off by myself during break time because their taunts cut me so deeply. What was worse was going to church on a Sunday. I felt like every eye was burning a hole through me. It was almost as if I could see the thoughts as they wandered Who is his real dad? When I was about 12, a new preacher came to church. I would always go in late and slip out early. But one day, the preacher said his benediction way too fast and I got caught in the crowd walking out. I could feel every eye on me. Just about the time I got to the door, I felt a big hand on my shoulder. I looked up and the preacher was right beside me. Who are you, son? Whose boy are you? I felt the old weight come on me. It was like a big cloud. Even the preachers putting me down, I thought. But as he looked down at me, studying my face, he began to smile a smile of recognition. Wait a minute, he said. I know who you are. I see the family resemblance. You are a son of God. With that, he slapped me across the rump and said, Boy, you've got a great inheritance. Go and claim it. Those words changed the rest of my life. When we look at Psalm 103, it's important for us to also look at Psalm 102. Because Psalm 102 is filled with troubles and problems, filled with feelings of being overwhelmed and hopeless and sick. 
But right after the psalm, where the psalmist really pours out his troubles and problems and hurts and worries and concerns to God, Psalm 103 comes with a wonderful response. A poem filled with reasons as to why we can continue to have hope. A psalm filled with reasons as we why we can hold on to God. A psalm filled with reasons and memories of things that God has done for us. In a way, the story we started out with has the same feeling to it. The little boy who didn't have a father, who felt isolated and judged, hurt and hopeless, is reminded that he is a son of God. So let's take a look at Psalm 103 a little closer. Psalm 103 is a masterful psalm classified as an individual hymn of thanksgiving. Now, individual things of, ham of thanksgiving that we find in the Psalms normally have certain elements to it. It starts out with an introduction in which the psalmist declares that he is worshipping or praising or thanking God. And then we find a section called the narrative where the psalmist gives us the reasons as to why he's worshipping and praising and thanking the Lord. And then it ends with a conclusion where the psalmist once again praises and thanks the Lord. Now, when we look at Psalm 103, we see very, a very important phrase that's repeated six times throughout this whole psalm at the beginning and at the end. So, in other words, at the introduction and the conclusion. And this phrase is, bless the Lord. Bless here means to thank God. The New Living Translation actually gives a very beautiful translation when it states, let all that I am praise the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? All that I am. These words are filled with so many emotional undertones because all that I am involves everything about me. My thoughts, my feelings, the way I think, the things I do, the reasons I do the things I do, the things I say. That what's good about me, that's what, that what is bad about me and that what is ugly about me. Everything that I am, everything that I stand for, everything that makes me me, praise the Lord. Now, why does the psalmist praise the Lord? We find the reasons in the narrative section, verses 3 to 19. The first reason is verse 3, because God forgives all sins. We all know what is expected from us. We know what's right. We know what's wrong. We know that we must always love and show compassion and mercy. We aim to do this daily, but we still fall short. We try and try and try, and sometimes it's not enough. Verse 10 connects with verse 3 to remind us that God doesn't punish us in the way that our sin demands. We find a very interesting word in verse 10, which is translated as iniquity. The Hebrew word here is avon, and it refers to a sense of being guilty. In other words, when God looks at us, he knows that we won't get it right all the time. He understands that. He made and created us after all. But God looks at how we repent. Are we truly sorry? Do we have remorse? Because if we do, that's what God looks at. If we confess, if we repent, then God forgives. The second reason the, part, the psalmist praises the Lord is because God heals us. He heals us from diseases. He heals us emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually. He comes to make us whole time and time again. He redeems us and crowns us with love and tender mercies day after day. Another reason to praise God is the fact that God works with righteousness and justice. He treats us fairly, even if the world doesn't always treat us fairly. His love, his compassion, his mercy is available to all of us equally. He carries all of us in times of trouble. He watches over all of us in times of stress and despair. He holds each and every single one of us in the palm of his hand 
no matter what. Another reason the psalmist praises God we find in verse 8. The Lord is filled with compassion and mercy, unfailing love, slow to get angry. These words occur so often in the book of Psalms and the prophetic literature. In fact, the description of God's character here is first given to us by Moses because Moses saw and he experienced that God never turned away from the people, even if the people turned away from God. God was always ready to forgive, always ready to accept back, always looking out for them, always at their side, constantly, consistently, always looking out for them, even though they always found something to moan about, and something to do that was wrong. Moses saw firsthand how long it took for God to really get angry, so angry that he does something. Now the prophets also experienced this. They saw that God was always filled with mercy and always slow to anger. And this is God's character. God is slow to anger. And even when he is angered, God doesn't hold a grudge or considers our sins when he deals with us. In fact, when we repent, he takes our sin and he separates it as far away from us as the east is from the west. Verses 11, 13 and 17 refers to the fear of the Lord. Now, fear in Hebrew is yara. And even though fear is a perfectly good translation of the word yara, we often associate fear with being scared and being terrified. And when we are scared and terrified, we normally react by fighting, flighting or freezing. Now, fearing the Lord, yara, encompasses a much larger meaning. It refers to awe, respect and honor. So the psalmist tells us that when we connect to God in awe and respect and honor, God's love to us is unfailing. He's tender and compassionate and his love remains forever. Verse 14 reminds us that God knows everything about us, even those things we wish he didn't know. He knows when we are weak. He knows that we are merely dust because he created us after all. He knit us together. He knows everything that's happened to us throughout our lives. And God's mercy for us is there because God has intimate knowledge of each and every single one of us knowledge of how our human nature works and still he loves us so as we go through this poem we see that there are plenty of reasons as to why the psalmist is praising the lord god forgives he heals he redeems he crowns he satisfies he works for justice and he makes his ways known to us but today we are going to focus on verse 13. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. What is one of your best and favorite memories of your dad, your grandpa, or even a father figure in your lives? Today is Father's Day and across our country, dads in all different shapes and sizes are celebrated for everything they do for us. Because in many ways, dads are like a good, dependable car. Sounds weird, doesn't it? If we get into a car, what is the first thing we notice? The steering wheel? The steering wheel is obviously there to move the wheels of the car so that we can go in the direction we need to go in. Dads, in many ways, are our steering wheels in life. From a very young age, they show us where we can go and how we can get there. They move us in the direction they think is good for us. When they see a boulder in the road, they move the steering wheel so that we go around it. When they see a cliff on our right hand side, they make sure that we keep left. Dads so often influence the way we think, the way we react to situations and scenarios, 
and the way we eventually then begin to steer our own lives when we are old enough. But dads, even though they give the wheel over to us, they'll always be a backseat driver, reminding us when to turn, where to turn. They just can't help themselves. But this keeps us humble, and their advice often keeps us safe. The second thing we notice as we sit behind the wheel of a car is the pedals on the floor, the brake and the petrol. Sometimes we really need to slam on those brakes, especially if a dog or a cat or a hardy dog runs or flies into the road. Other times we really need to push the petrol as we go past a very slow moving truck. Dads, in many ways, act as our brakes. They remind us to be cautious on our life's journey. And very often, when the danger comes, they help us to stop. Other times, they are our biggest supporters, pushing us, encouraging us, helping us to go harder and better, like the petrol pedal of our car. They warn, they encourage, they help us to stop and they help us to get moving. As we sit behind the wheel of a car, we also notice a few gadgets. The windscreen wipers, the indicator lights, the headlights and the brights. These gadgets help us as we drive to make sure that we can see when it's dark or see when it's rainy. They help us to be visible on the road so that others can see us. Dads in many ways are our windscreen wipers and our lights. When we go through times of trouble, when we find ourselves in a misty storm or on a very dark road, they help us to see, they help us to be seen, they help us to stay safe. They come alongside us and hold us close when our roads are scary and dark and rainy, enabling us to get through the storm and through the dark road we face. As we sit in the car, we also notice that it's a fairly comfortable seat and we have things like egg on and a heater. What is more comfortable than a dad's lap when we are scared? What is more fun than playing in a pool with our dad on a hot summer's day? Or sitting in front of a fire watching TV, playing board games or chatting on a cold winter's evening? Dads are our comfortable place. A place we run to when we are scared or hot or cold. A dad always provides us with warmth when we are cold or wise words when we are hot under the collar, or a hug when we are scared. As we sit in the car and we switch it on, music often plays. Driving with music often makes the journey seem a little shorter, especially on those long road trips. Music often speaks to our souls when we are not feeling so lacquer. Music often lifts our spirits or pumps us up before we have to go into a difficult meeting. Music makes life bearable and dads in the same way is the music that plays in our cars. They make the journey of life bearable. They get us in a happy mood when we are stressed or lifts us up when we are sad or speaks to our souls when we need it. As we are about to pull away we put on our safety belts. A belt to keep us safe in case we knock into something or someone. A belt that holds us secure and protects us at all times. Dares are our safety belts so often. Keeps us secure, they protect us at all times and they are there whenever we hit one or other roadblock in our life's journey. And so our list of what dads mean to us and what they do for us can go on and on. Today, we want to thank all the dads and the grandpas and the father figures in our lives for being our steering wheel, our petrol and our brake, our windscreen wipers and our lights, our comfy seats, aircon and heater, our music and our safety belts. Thank you for all that you do for us and for all that you mean to us. To those of us missing our dad, let's remember the good memories the memories that bring smiles to our faces as we celebrate our dads today. To those of us who may have not been fortunate enough to have a dad, our psalmist today comes to remind us that God is our dad. 
He is our steering wheel, our petrol and our brake, our windscreen wipers and our lights, our comfy seats, aircon and heater, our music and our safety belts. These are the reasons that this psalmist writes Psalm 103. These are the reasons he praises God. All of us, no matter who we are, have a family resemblance to our Father in heaven, just like the little boy in our story. God is our Father. He loves us. He's faithful. He's slow to anger. He forgives us and he heals us. And he's always tender and compassionate. May we all experience God's fatherly love today as we remember and celebrate our earthly dads and father figures for all that they do. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for being our dad, the one we can call Abba Father, the one who is our steering wheel ensuring we go in the right path, the one who breaks us at the right time and gives us the energy and strength that we need. Thank you for being the one who helps us to see clearly when dark roads and clouds form around us. Thank you for being our shelter, source of comfort and warmth when we feel cold and isolated. Thank you for being our music, carrying us and uplifting us and making the journey of life fun. Thank you for being our safety belt and protecting us in the palm of your hand. We praise you for your love, faithfulness, forgiveness and healing. We praise you for your compassion and tenderness. We praise you that you are slow to anger and that you understand us completely. Thank you for being our Father, our Lord and our Saviour. Today we pray a special blessing over our dads, grandpas and father figures in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for sending them to teach us your way, to show us your love, to hug us with your warmth. Bless them, Lord, and grant them the patience and strength to continue being our source of comfort and compassion. We pray for all who are missing their dads today. Lord, come and embrace them, come and comfort them, come and hold them close in your loving arms. We pray for all who don't have dads, or never knew their fathers. Thank you, Lord, that we can know that you are our dad. You are the one that's there for us. You always care, and we are your sons and daughters whom you love fiercely and ferociously. Today we come to pray for all who are ill, all who are terminal, all who are in hospital battling COVID-19. We ask, Lord, that you will come and comfort, come and heal, come and embrace, and come and grant us the strength we need for every new day. Come and restore our bodies, minds and hearts so that we can glorify your name. We pray for all medical staff who are working overtime. Come and grant them the energy they need, the compassion they need and the love that they need as they grow weary and tired. We pray for all teachers and pupils in schools that are hit hard with COVID. Lord, protect our teachers and children. Hold them close and watch over them. We pray, Lord, for each and every single person listening and looking up to you. We know you know us all, Lord. You know our worries, fears, concerns. You know our joys and things that we are grateful for. Lord, come and reveal yourself to each one of us so that we may feel your warm, fatherly embrace today and in this week to come. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. We now are going to listen to the hymn, Father, I place into your hands. Father, I place into your hands the things I cannot do. Father, I place into your hands the things that I've been through. Father, I place into your hands the way that I should go, for I know. I always can trust you. Father, I place into your hands my friends and family. Father, I place into your hands the things that trouble me. Father, I place into your hands the person I would be. For I know I always can trust 
Ubabalo le nkosi yetu u Yezu Kristu, utando luka tiko, ubutlelwana lo moyo uye nkwele, malube nani nonke. Inayo maki genore van God, di liefde van Christus en die gemeenskap van die heilige gees, met alkeen van jylle wees en blij. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you and all those whom you love, now and forevermore. Amen. May you all have a blessed day today. Thanks for joining us.